Hey guys, Odd Job Fix here again with another video on furniture repair. This one is the inlaid marquetry tabletop that I did the first video back in February. I had a lot of comments to follow up on that, so we're getting ready to go to the part two on this particular video. I'll leave a link in the description below on part one. When we last saw this table, I was getting ready to uh, plug the holes in the center. Uh, it was a two-tiered table. So the top tier somehow was lost and I just picked it up for oh, $15 or something just so I could do some repair on the veneer. This video is not intended to show you how to do marquetry. This video is intended to show you how to do repairs. And even though I am putting some new pieces in here, I'm going to consider this a repair. Uh, I was attempting there to use a spray can to trace out the uh, shape of the pieces that I pre-cut that I'm going to lay down into that piece of ebony that I put in the, the center, the plug there. I need to mark these. Uh, they are each a little different, so I need to remember where they go. And after seeing the shadows left by that uh, can of spray, uh, I'm very carefully tracing these with an X-Acto knife. The technique here is to make many small cuts, just go over and over and over. The first one, of course, being the most critical because you've got to be dead on or otherwise the knife's just going to wander. Now that piece of leather that you see sitting there, part of an old belt, has actually got some compound on it. And occasionally I'll take my X-Acto knife and I'll strop it. I've got fine on one side and a little bit coarser on the other side. Uh, a, a brand new X-Acto knife blade is not bad, but uh, they dull quickly. I'm using another kind of a knife here that's got a little bit of a hook to it that digs down a little deeper. I'm not sure of its accuracy for the first cut, though. Now I'm going to make sure that I go deep enough. Actually going too deep doesn't hurt anything because it's when you lift out the center that's important. And I'm going to start doing that process right here. I'm going to take a very sharp chisel and I'm going to very, very gently see if I can lift some of that out over to what we call the relief cut. Now that would be the tracing. So if you're doing wood carving, you're, you're, you're chiseling towards your relief cut. Otherwise you're going to get chip out. So the relief cut is the most important cut and I'll just work this very carefully, make sure that relief is deep enough, when, and especially at the corners. When I get, get it just right, it should pop out nice and easily. There we go, just like that. Now, this router plane is obviously way too big for the job. They sell these in a much smaller version, but in the bigger field there, I can just get an idea of what the depth is going to be, and I can work towards the relief cut, both at the outer diameter of the plug and uh, over to the relief cut at the edge of the little leaf that I made. So I'm being very, very careful here. And again, much too big of a tool to be using here, but uh, that's what I had. And um, it too has to be extremely sharp. All right, we're getting ready for glue up here. It turns out that each of my leaves actually split, but I'm not gonna uh, worry about that. Uh, again, this table is not worth anything. It's an import. Um, it's a copy of something French from centuries ago, but um, uh, this was possibly made in India, maybe the Philippines, I don't know. Uh, it's not very accurate as far as the detailing on the existing carving, so, or inlay, if you will. So I'm just doing this uh, just to show that this kind of stuff can be repaired. And um, I'm going to use a little hide glue there and slide these pieces in place very carefully. Again, the, the gap between them uh, in, the, in the end is not going to make that big of a difference. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that later on in the video here. So as I get these into place, I'm going to have to clamp this down very securely. So I've got my plug there with a piece of packing tape on the bottom of it and then a, a small weight in order to keep that in place while I'm uh, assembling the clamp fixture that I'm going to ultimately use. So I get that last little piece adjusted very carefully, push this down, 
try not to move it once I set it down. Put my weight on there. And now you're going to see me place a beam across the entire table so that I can clamp it from the edges because I don't have a clamp that's long enough to get to the center. And besides, it is still on the pedestal, so I can't get there anyway. So with a temporary weight there, a small anvil, uh, I'll begin to slide very carefully my C-clamps on from either side simultaneously and then equally apply pressure down and leave it overnight. So that's the, that's the final assembly there, how it looks to be left overnight and then we'll pull it apart and see how it looks. While I was off camera, I put a couple of coats of very thin shellac to seal the surface on this. I also put a dark stain around the rim, which kind of ties into the, uh, the darkness in the legs here. So this is what it looks like after the repairs. I did use a wood filler because uh, the spacing on the uh, some of the repairs they left a little bit of a gap and there were some gaps in the uh, original inlay as well uh, that chipped out while I was doing the scraping. So um, those left light streaks which I'm going to color in. I'm pointing some of the areas out. That's new. Uh, that's a new piece. I'll try to shade those as I go along. But this line right here, there's a little light spot right there. And this entire line here is a little bit light. So it, it needs an accent. Now I'm going to take this very fine graining brush and I'm going to produce those accents all the way around where it needs. And um, at some point, I actually drew some veins in the leaves in the centers doing with this same technique. And I was employing the crack down the middle of those leaves that I told you that I wasn't going to worry about uh, when uh, I was doing the glue up. Now, maybe there's a little too much video here showing me do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and let it play out because this really did make the difference in uh, how this thing turned out in the uh, in the final finish. No doubt this is some tedious work. You've got to have a lot of patience, but having a good tool helps. This isn't the only tool that you can use, but um, this uh, particular graining pencil works very nice for this application. Those little white spots that you see in the foreground right at the bottom there will be done with a uh, more of a broad felt pen type of touch up. The first application was a little light, but I had to wait to see it dry before I could actually determine what color it was. And then I just went over it with a, uh, a little bit darker shade and then just touched it a couple times with that same graining pencil. So, all right, we're on to finishing here. I'm brushing on a coat of shellac. And uh, right after I get this brushed out, while it's still wet, I'm gonna shake on some pumice. And then I'm gonna take what they call a rubber which is just uh, some cotton balls wrapped around a piece of uh, cotton sheet, t-shirt, linen, whatever you have. It has to be smooth. There are a lot of videos on French polishing if you want to learn that technique. So here's a little bit of pumice. They recommend the 4F grade. Pumice comes in F, 2F, 3F, 4F, and then there's even a finer grade of pumice called rotten stone. Uh, that is really extremely fine. The purpose of this is to get the brush marks out of the shellac and the pumice actually rubs down into a little bit of the minor wood grain that is left. And this piece uh, does, it is mahogany and there is quite a bit of grain to it. After I scraped it, I exposed all the grain. So just putting shellac on it alone is not really uh, enough of a wood filler. And the wood filler that I did use was more or less concentrated around the uh, repairs and the voids around the repairs, not out in the field, which is what I'm working on right now. 
After letting that dry for an hour, I'm coming back with that same rubber that's charged with a lot of alcohol and just a little bit of shellac. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just evening out the finish with very, very light strokes. You can see a little bit of wispy streaks there. That's the alcohol flashing. Well, we've come to the end of the marquetry table. We started out with this, and we got to this, and finally this. Hey, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. See you next time.